Welcome to SWK's video series on Sage 100. This video is going to show you a lovely feature in the Sage Intelligence Reporting Module. This is a module that comes with your, with your um, Sage licenses, but I'm going to show you the report designer that is only included with your subscription. If you're on Perpetual, there is an extra fee for this. So I'm going to launch this, and while this is launching, I just want to talk to you about what's happening here. This is an Excel-based tool, and what it's doing now, it's going into the General Ledger module, and it's creating pivot tables for us of all the General Ledger data. And it's going to set it up in such a format that it's going to be easy for us to use. Let's go ahead and expand this worksheet and create a new sheet for us to work in. I'm going to come over to the lists. I'm going to take my main accounts and I'm going to slide them over onto my spreadsheet. And what has happened is that it has brought in all of my GL account numbers, actually only in the main account numbers, and have brought them into my worksheet along with their description. It had also brought in the category it was part of in the group, but I don't need that for my report. The next thing I want to do is bring up the formulas. The first thing is I'm going to show you the current year that I'm in and the current period. This is looking at my general ledger module and looking for the period that you would see displayed under general ledger options. Next, I'm going to bring another formula in. I'm going to bring in my closing balance. Bring it over here and you see it doesn't look so good, but if I come into my function up over here, what it is missing is where the general ledger account would be found to be included in this function. So I'm going to anchor the uh, first column and I'm going to put in my row, which is row six, and you'll see now that it has brought in all of my balances for my, from my general ledger for period five of, version, uh, of year 2020. I could do some really nice things with this. Uh, first of all, if I wanted to, I can easily just insert. And now, because it's Excel, I can do a subtotal for my cash. Or I could come in and do a little total over here, put a little formula in here, and now both of my cash accounts are on this first line. Lots of handy things that you can do to make this exactly the report that you want. Something that I like to do is in my, um, uh, in my formula over here, it is pointing to the year and it's referring to a formula called GL Current Year. What I like to do is I like to change this to, uh, I'm going to do dollar sign A, dollar sign 2, so that it is always looking at the year that I have typed in up in that location. And I'm going to do the same thing for the period. Now, if I want to, let's uh, copy this down. So if I come in here and now change this to 2019, all of my numbers change, and now I'm looking at May of 2019. Something else that's handy, let's bring this back to 2020, and I'm going to copy and paste this formula into column D. And what I want to do is I want a comparison to last year. So I'm just going to put in a quick little formula over here. And now what we see is that we have year 2020 in column C, and we have year uh, 2019 in column D. Think about all the, all the things that you could do. You could have periods 1 through 12. Uh, you could have a five years worth of uh, financial data trended. You could do whatever you want. And because this is Excel, now I could simply... Um, uh, organize my data in the way that I want, and just using some simple little formulas up over here, I could combine account numbers onto a single row. I had shown you where you could do 100 to 101, but I could also do 100 and 105. Now I have this 
These uh, totals here are now combined with my first column. Uh, I'm sorry, within a column, a row six. So think of that. I could take account information that is not in a range or not in order, and I could put those on a single line so I could present my financial data in exactly the way I need to. One last thing that I want to show you is when I go to save my template, I'm going to come back to my um, manager here. I'm going to click on my report. I'm going to save my Excel template and just go through here. It's telling me, are you sure I want to do this? I'm replacing the file. So I basically have overridden everything. And it's giving me a notice that it is successful. And it has closed out my Excel. So if I want to run this again, I'm going to click on my file name. I'm going to click on Run. And then you'll see my report. There's so many things that you can do with this. There's also many other things that you could do with uh, with the intelligence. It's not only financial data, but you are able to uh, pull in data from all the other modules. Uh, it's just a little bit different functionality in that you're creating uh, containers for the information. Don't worry about the word container. It's just a way that you're accumulating the data and you're putting in, is it a one-to-one -one or one-to-many relationships? There's a lot to look at here. We would love to help you out with this. I really feel that this could help you with your business and give you reports in the exact way that you need. I hope this helps you get more out of Sage 100. Thank you for watching our video.